Welcome to the Hard Rock Show. I'm Shane. I'm Andrew. And uh, this is our very special tribute episode to the late, great Ronnie James Dio. Yeah, this is a very good one. We like to do these sorts of things, so yeah. and this is a, a hell of a one to do. So Definitely. Uh, yeah. There hasn't really been many people around that have had such a long and uh, prolific career as he. Well, over 50 years of yeah. work he compiled, um, and the majority of it, very successful. Yeah. So if there's anyone in our lifetimes that can replicate that then they're doing pretty bloody well so definitely definitely yeah. uh the the man actually wasn't born ronnie james Dio. no he wasn't <laughs> he was born ronnie ronnie james padavona something like that yeah i don't know how to pronounce it exactly but yeah and uh he ended up changing his name taking adopting a stage name later on in his career uh which he adopted from a mafia crime boss at the time ronnie no was it ronnie Dio? no I forget his name, but I know it was Dio. I know the last name was Dio, yeah. I'm wondering if it was. <laughs> Maybe it was James Dio. Something that like that, That might have been possibly. what I'm thinking of, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, well, he, uh, he started using that name in 1962. Yeah. So he's been known as Dio for pretty much his entire career anyway. Ever since he did anything really productive, yeah. There were a few little early things, but it was even on pretty much his first recordings, it was almost yeah. a case of yep. Dio. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, as we know, he's been in Sabbath, Dio, the band itself. Yep. Uh, later in his final days, it was Heaven and Hell with the former band members from Sabbath. Uh, there was also Rainbow. 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 Yep. Uh, Rainbow is a funny one. Yeah. yeah. There's a bit of a story behind There's that. There's a, so. a long, long backstory. Yeah. Going back to 1962 when he first yeah. adopted the Dio stage name. Yeah. Um, some of his first bands, Ronnie and the Rockers, yeah, and uh, the, oh, that that pretty much the same lineup, yeah, had uh, several different name changes. Different, the lineup changed here and there, and yeah. then there was usually a name change where there was Ronnie and the Red Caps or yeah. something like that yeah. in there as well, and the name would change along with the lineup, and then they finally, I think, settled on, I think it was Electric Elf, something like that, yes, and then it got changed, and then they became Elf, yeah, and uh, then Richie Blackmore came in the picture and. Uh, swallowed elf up as rainbow yeah and it was originally when they first did rainbow it was richie blackmore's rainbow that's right so yep. it was a bit yep he was from deep purple at the time so what are you going to do about that <laughs> i'm sure he had the star power in the equation yeah. back then yep but uh yeah then the offer came in for uh ronnie to go and join sabbath as ozzy's replacement yeah and uh we all know that Ozzy is pretty much the the guy that is is Black Sabbath. Yeah, I mean, it's arguable that Iommi and Butler are actually Black Sabbath, and it's probably true. But Ozzy's always the first one to come to mind. The face, and, the yeah. name are synonymous. You've got Ozzy and Sabbath. It's one of the same. Yeah. And the notoriety. <laughs> oh yeah, <that's... laughs> but um, yeah. Dio definitely did a great job of uh, filling the the gap left yeah. by Ozzy. They were huge yeah, um, shoes to fill. Yeah, and absolutely. He filled them. He did, really and well. um, he, he not just he didn't really fill them. No, I would he... I would actually say that he uh, helped make Black Sabbath an entirely new band, fully re recreated what Black Sabbath were. Well, the success had died off a bit, and the rumors and all the speculation and all the stuff that's going on around Ozzy leaving, and he just come in and he's reinvigorated it and gave them new commercial success. Yeah, so. definitely hard to argue with that kind of a accomplishment so yeah well he stuck around with sabbath for a few albums and then in 1982 him and the drummer for black sabbath at the yep. time vinnie apice yep sorry carmen apice yep uh vinnie's brother yeah <laughs> they actually um left and started the band dio yeah and dio was around until 2004 and i believe that um they actually never fully disbanded and there was going to be uh, another album come uh, sometime down the track. Well, they did ten albums. Ten in that albums time frame as well, which is pretty good. That's a that's a good output for yeah. a band. I mean, that's uh, pretty much on average two albums or one album every two years. Sorry. Yeah. And considering the touring schedule they would have had going on at the time, that's actually a pretty good effort. Yeah, and there's uh, that's at a time when uh, bands are taking between five and six years to put out albums. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, no, it's very very good output. Yeah. Um, and then obviously in two thousand and four. He uh, got back together with yep. uh, the former Black Sabbath bandmates for yep. for a bit of a, um, a reunion of sorts. They were doing yeah. the greatest hits Dio years compilation yeah. album. 
well, they recorded a few new tracks for it. And the beautiful thing about that was with Dio involved, you had such a wider range of material because he yeah. would cover anything and everything that he would had worked on yeah. under the moniker of Heaven and Hell. Yeah. And so it was just, we didn't get to see it. But if we'd have been able to, it would have been a huge repertoire mm, to, absolutely. to see. Yep. But um, that led to the boys from Black Sabbath, that yep. era of Black Sabbath, wanting to to get out on the road and tour. Yeah. Which uh, lawsuits stopped them from getting out there and doing so <laughs> yeah. under the Black Sabbath name. So yep. they adopted the name Heaven and Hell, yeah. which was the album, yeah. the iconic album from yeah. Dio Black Sabbath exactly. era. Exactly. And uh, they ended up releasing the album, The Devil You Know, which yep. was a fantastic album. Absolutely. And uh, we'll be talking more about these albums later on. Yep. But uh, a great, great, great musician... Yes. Mike Tramp has done a tribute song for Dio. This is well worth it. This is something out there. It was a diamond in the rock. We looked around for things yeah. to put to this tribute, and this was just perfect. Yeah. So uh, this is Mike Tramp's uh, Dio tribute song. It's called A Hymn for Ronnie. And uh, we'll throw some pictures up there and yep. a couple of little facts here and there about Ronnie and his career. Yep. So uh, enjoy. On the misty May morning. Somewhere in L.A. The man on the silver mountain had faded away. Angels had come when most expected beasts. A new journey begun. Ronnie, rest in peace. back that was uh, a hymn for ronnie a great tribute song by mike tramp yeah um i just thought that song was great the first time i heard it well how much of of dio's career is referenced yeah, in that's, one that's song what made it really <laughs> yeah. cool to me yeah but um I, I think that's a great tribute yeah um so we've spoken about dio we've listened to the tribute song there was yep. some a lot of other stuff that dio was into um he played himself in the Tenacious D yeah. Pick of Destiny movie, yeah. which was quite entertaining. Um, and considering there was a byplay there with Tenacious D almost hanging you know, shit on him to pass the torch kind of yeah, thing. And, yeah. and it ended up going both ways, yeah. so it was pretty good. No, that was very entertaining. Yeah. Seeing him as a life-size poster on the back <laughs> of the bedroom door come come to life, and yeah. that was pretty cool, I reckon. Yeah. I would, <laughs> would love to see some of my posters come to life yeah. back in the day. Yeah. Um, I think everyone would when they were kids, pretty yeah. much. So. And um, he was also the voice of Professor X on yeah. um, Queensryche's 2004 album, I think it was. Something like that, yeah. Uh, Operation Mindcrime 2, yeah. the successful sequel to the even more successful <laughs> Operation, Mind Operation Crime. Mindcrime from the yeah. 80s, yeah. Pretty yeah. much the, the album that put Queensryche on the map. Yeah. Um, I think... Now is probably the time where we have a bit more of a look at some of the, the Dio albums. Yeah, now's um, a good chance. Yeah. yeah. I think a favourite of mine yep. is uh, Rainbow Rising. That is a good album. From its 
I think it's the second Rainbow album. I think actually. so. Yeah, it's the first one where they weren't billed as Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. Exactly. So, yeah, um, that was just fantastic. And it keeps getting voted very high up there, if not number one of yeah. the rock metal albums of yeah. all time. It's very high up there in its peers, I guess, and it's very well recognised by everyone in, who knows this kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, then of course there's the Black Sabbath era. Yep. Where um, two great albums in my yep. mind, and I know you agree. Yes. Uh, there's <laughs> obviously the Heaven and Hell album. Yeah. You, you don't really get much better than that. That actually, in our opinion, almost tops some of the Ozzy Osbourne. I reckon era. so. Yeah. Uh, That's you listen to that thing from start to finish, and it's a killer. There's no, I know there's the whole saying about no filler and stuff, but this one is just from start to finish, go to woe brilliant stuff definitely yeah. and um then there's the mob rules yeah which is another good one it is a favorite of mine and the, the actual track the mob rules was yeah. one of the first times i ever heard dio's voice so yeah. um that one always sticks out in my mind yeah. and yeah. it's yeah another it's another good definitely great black sabbath album but yeah, it's absolutely very very different to the aussie era again yeah. which is in my opinion a good thing um, then you got Holy Diver. Yeah, you moved, the, moved on to Dio yeah, after that, and yeah. uh, Holy Diver album. <laughs> Wait, what can you say? <sighs> Man. It's brilliant again. Stand up and shout. Yeah. Um, the actual track Holy yeah. Diver. Yep. Um, how, how that that song still is influential. Yeah. Uh, we just talked about Double Wide's album the other yeah. week, where they've ended the album with a cover of Holy Diver. Yeah. It's still that whole album, that particular track is very much in rotation and is still cited as an influence. Yeah, definitely. Visibly, obviously, if you know what you're doing, then you'll see that anyway. Yep. And, um, well, Dio, the band, had 10 albums, as yep. we said. Another one that is a highlight for me is The Last In Line. Yep. Uh, that's a, a bit of a, a step away from Holy Diver, but at the same yep. time, very much Dio. And I think it's great. And then, of course, there's... We've got heaven and hell. Heaven and hell. The devil yep. you know. Yep. Um, I reckon, just if I'm going to jump in here, yeah, that was the it. last album sort of that he really put together with the band and all that sort of stuff. That one album, I reckon, shows he was in no danger of slowing down no, or backing definitely off. Not. He no. had it all going for him. He was still firing away on all the cylinders. It was, it was brilliant. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there was actually talk of another album to come yeah. from those guys. There was talk of another Dio album, there. Yeah. so he definitely wasn't slowing down at all. No, and at all. Um, uh, sadly, they had to cancel a bunch of yeah. gigs when Ronnie became really sick. Yeah, but um, he definitely wasn't going to slow down. No, nah, not at all. He's another one. We spoke about a couple of people a few weeks ago, a few yep. episodes ago, yep. um, such as Lemmy and yeah. Ozzy and Keith Richards. He was probably. One of the sort of guys that would have kept going until the, the day, day he died, died which and... he more or less was. Yeah. So. <laughs> Just kind of fitting in this yeah, regard. but Definitely. I think that as the man himself, just going to go on a slight tangent, the, the thing that is most remembered about this guy is how much of a loving and caring individual he was. He wasn't the prima donna metal god and no. all that sort of stuff. He was very much about trying to make people see that the world was not all bad and trying to do the right thing, very charitable, and, and was just very well loved by everyone. And the turnout at his funeral yeah. alone dictates that. Definitely. Um, we've seen the the Eddie Trunk, yeah. uh, that metal show, tribute to Dio, yep. where uh, you had uh, Rob Halford and Tom Morello, yeah. and a whole bunch of guys that you wouldn't actually expect. No, but everyone but, seems to come out of the woodwork for this one individual, yeah. and I... Another thing that stands with me personally is just his voice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was recognisable from the start, and for a guy that apparently had no classical training, Never. he just had a monster of a voice. And he was a tiny little guy, and yeah. he just had pipes that could go like nothing else. I, I had a conversation with someone just the other yeah. day when I was saying, how did such a huge voice come out of such a little, little man? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean little man in a bad way. No. He was actually tiny. Yeah. But... Uh, I think that's probably all we've got time for. We better send him off, I guess. I think there is only one fitting way to send a man like Dio off, and that's that right. is with his own very own invention. That's right. He's credited <laughs> with this, folks. Yeah. So if you're doing this at a concert anytime, anywhere, know where this comes from. Yeah. If you if you ever throw this up, know that it came from Dio and 
give the man respect. Yep. So, Ronnie Dio, thank you from the Hard Rock Show. Very much. We salute you.